Sharing good practice I think is probably the only way that we can really evolve as teachers. It keeps the ideas fresh in my mind, it keeps me thinking about ways of improving what I can do. Sometimes the things that, that don't go perfectly are actually the best learning experiences. Anything that works for improving the outcomes of children has to be shared immediately. Sharing knowledge is about keeping lines of communication open, reacting quickly and moving ideas and information around with speed and efficiency. Good afternoon, speed. How can I help? Schools can follow the lead from many sectors to improve their communication and share best practice. As MD of PR agency Speed, Steve Earle is an expert in keeping in touch with his clients to make sure they are ahead of the game at all times. We're a public relations consultancy. We work for clients in business and consumer and we work for corporate clients as well. And what we basically do is we counsel clients on how they need to talk to the outside world, make sure that they tell good stories in a positive way, but also make sure that they don't trip over their own feet and say things they shouldn't be. Communication in business starts very small and gets very big in terms of the number of people that will participate in it. So it can be a one-to-one -one conversation. It can be a meeting, it can be an email that's one-to-one -one or one-to-many. It can be a phone call, it can be a conference call with lots of people on the phone at the same time. While I try to make sure that I communicate internally with everyone that I'm working with on a day-to-day -day basis, sometimes the thoughts you have um, and the information you want to share is just impractical to share on the move in a meaningful way. So often having something that's like a diary that you use um, to make sure you get your views across, well, those views can be pretty mundane or they can be very contentious, um, is a way of engaging people in the conversation. There are few major businesses around Dartmoor and being in the countryside makes communication even more important for schools. Innovations in technology are going a long way to helping schools stay in touch and here the order of the day is video conferencing. Hi Heather. Hi Paul, how are you I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. I uh, didn't get a chance at the end of the day to talk to Caroline about her opportunity next year to go and cl climb Mount Kilimanjaro and get some video diaries back and forth. What do you think? Yeah, I'll have a chat with her. Just Conversation on phones and emails, they're a bit sterile. It's, it's alive. But the, 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 the way we, we look, the video conferencing will happen at all levels. It will happen at the leadership level, it will happen at the governance level. But actually the most important for us is now getting this embedded in the children's level. So the children will video conference with each other. We've already set that up where they've actually had some interaction between the schools. They've shared uh, their work. They've actually uh, done lessons together. It's a life skill as well. I mean, they're going to grow up as adults where video conferencing is going to be the norm. I think there's no substitute ultimately for all being in the same place at the same, same time, but often today in business it isn't practical to be in the same place at the same time. And video conferencing, teleconferencing certainly beats a conference call where you're just sat on the telephone line waiting for someone else to speak. Tools like this are essential for Paul Jones as he is running a federation of schools spread across rural Devon. As the executive principal, he works with a strong team of heads of teaching and learning who run four different schools up to 50 miles apart. All right. Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay, thanks Paul. Bye. The fun of a tenant is that anything that works for improving the outcomes of children has to be shared immediately with every school in the Federation. You have the license to create and innovate because you're in a very secure, supportive network of schools and they also have an executive head which actually will make that happen. My job is to actually give them the license to take risks with teaching and learning. Try something new. But as soon as it works, it has to be spread. Over at Chudley Knight and Primary School, Heather Slater is their head of teaching and learning. She works closely with Paul and her colleagues in the other federated schools. The senior leadership team is made up of the executive head, the heads of teaching and learning from the other schools and also the business manager and we meet every half term and through that we can share what's actually happening in schools 
and then take that away and develop it in our own ways um, at our own schools. Why do you want weapons? Defend, there might be defence. Excellent, keep going. While Heather is constantly in touch with schools across the Federation, her teachers compare notes with their colleagues in other schools all the time. I know the teachers here are constantly in contact with the teachers from the three other schools, either via email or via phone in, or actually through using their PPA time to go and visit the other schools, um, to either watch a lesson, for example, or to do some planning together, or to run a project together, use of the video conferencing, and so on. The first thing I think about the, uh, the benefit for, children, for teachers is the isolation goes. By a federation, we can actually put six teachers together, all teaching the same age range, and then they can actually start talking about resources. The, uh, the idea of being able to ring somebody up or just email them and saying, actually, I'm doing so-and-so. Have you got any ideas or have you got something? The staff across the federation don't just share ideas with each other. They also have the opportunity to move about from one school to another. One of the first people to do this was Laura. Yes, excellent. Make sure your units are all down in one column and then the tens and then the hundreds, okay? I um, started part-time at Chudley Knighton, job sharing with the head of teaching and learning in my first year that I was there. And then the second year that I was there, I taught in year five, six. And then I came across to Blackpool to teach in year three, four before moving up to year five, six this year. So she brought all that expertise that she'd learned and actually brought it across again to, to Blackpool and then was able to challenge in her own you know, professional way how we would do things at Blackpool compared to how they were doing it at Shuddy Knight. Oh, it's, it's brilliant because you, you've not got to go through the whole rigmarole of applying for other jobs and being uncertain as to whether you're going to get the job, whereas you're moving around in the, in the safety of what you know. Um, so those experiences are all, are all there for you to take if, if you want to, with, in, in a sort of a safety net. If we can get teachers talking together and working together and planning together, you've got four minds, five minds, six minds, all thinking about how do we deliver this for children, the outcomes for children must, must be better. Strong dialogue with the wider community is helping schools to share best practice from a wide variety of sources. Here at Bishop Stopford School in Kettering, they borrow expertise from major local businesses to enhance both the curriculum and management style of their school. I think we realised that our capacity to teach students in school was quite limited in some ways. Um, lots of us have been in education all of our lives and have had very little contact with the wider world out there. And even colleagues who come in from industry, once they've been out of industry for a few years, they, they, they lose contact, they lose their up-to-dateness, if you like, with that work that, that they've been doing. So we, we feel very strongly that we need to get involved with local industry to build our own capacity to teach students for the world of work that they'll be going into and for future careers. Okay. So today we're going to be looking at the supply chain in a bit of detail and we're going to look at how it works together and what kind of things can affect it and who it affects. So the the logistics sector is big business in Kettering, which is well located near major lorry routes. The school has now rebranded their business studies course as logistics to reflect this, and they work closely with major supply chain experts in the Kettering area. How were local businesses like, affected with all the snow? Was it like, how much did it, did it affect them money-wise? What we could do, if you want, is you could email your mentor at Wing Canton. So who's your mentor? At Steve. Steve. Right, OK. Do you want to email Steve and see what he says and let me know? OK. OK. The peer mentoring scheme is something that we've established just this year, and that's based at Wing Canton. So they distribute for Argos and a lot of other um, companies. Um, and basically what it is is that certain members of staff have basically promised their time to the pupils that we have in this lesson. And if ever they have any questions or if they're confused about anything or if they want to go and look at something, um, then they can contact their mentor and that mentor can arrange that for them. Hello, Steve. During our business lesson, the subject of snow came up. We were wondering if the snow and bad weather would affect you money-wise because you may not have been able to transport goods. Hi Alex, good question. The children can email us when they have a, a specific problem about logistics and we're just generally there for them to sound uh, their questions off and queries off rather than having to go to their teachers or maybe to their mum and dad who doesn't work in logistics. 
Steve Butler's involvement with the school goes well beyond peer mentoring. He works closely with a number of schools in the area, helping them with their Leading Edge Partnership program. It's a national um, programme which looks at bringing schools together precisely on the agenda of, of sharing informed practice and it's about raising achievement in schools and getting schools together to look at different issues that are of common concern to them. Um, right, if we just start the meeting by reviewing the DVD that we made with some students from your school and my school and later on in the day your school, um, if we, the one from Wincanter is particularly useful because obviously we're here and then we start talking about some lesson ideas. So if we just start to watch the DVD. We're just going to ask you a bit about how you incorporate maths in your day-to-day -day routine working here. Okay, no problem. Today, Steve is meeting maths teachers from various schools in the partnership. They are here to discuss how they can build on their relationship with him to create more lesson starters to use in their classes. I kind of would like to have you set in the students a problem that's to do with something that's going on at Wincantonham. So that could be some way of sort of contextualising your job in terms of the maths that goes on. We, we had a thing when we very, very first started, and it, it, it was, believe it or not, it was called the Lego game. And, and we literally got a, a square of Lego, and we give people certain different shapes. How many of those can you get in 1.6 metre high, 1 metre by 1.2 metre? Because that's our capacity. But it never works that way because there's always this little bit of wastage, if you like. And, and what we try and do is make sure that that wastage is as low as possible. So what's the initial problem that we pose, though? That's the thing. I mean, is, is it going to be the, a simple sort of pallet that you have to fill of Lego bricks or...? Um, I, I, I was not always a teacher, but my experience in the, in the real world, if you want to call it that, has probably been limited in terms of the job roles I've had. This gave me an opportunity to speak to other careers, other opportunities, other things that the students might be interested in I never even thought of. Hi. I'm Steve Butler from Wincanton. You meet me here on the shop floor of Argos Distribution Centre in Kettering. We import stuff from overseas. This is one of my containers that's recently arrived, full of microwaves. In conjunction with your teachers, I've been asked to set you a problem. The problem I want to know is how many of these microwaves can I get in this container? Your teachers have got all the dimensions. They're going to set you the problem. I think it's an invaluable experience. Um, we've got lots of experience, but one of the major things for most teachers, I think, is time, actually having time to discuss and come up with ideas. Um, when we actually get a chance to sit down and plan collectively, we can come up with some really good ideas. Schools are really learning already, I think, not from industry, but just from the world at large about communications. They are starting to pick this stuff up naturally. I think that's happening across society. If you can share best practice, teachers become better at their job. Therefore, children get a better deal, they get better outcomes for children, it's more exciting, more enjoyable, therefore schools are better. You have to look at other people and what they do to inspire you and encourage you. So for me, that's just about you know, making what you can do already and turning it into something better. It is actually the most important part of education. Without us sharing, how can we continue to provide, actually, an education for the 21st century. Thank you.